Center for Skill Development, Rajamundri. And I request all the participants to stay with us for the interesting sessions, motivating sessions to be followed. Wishing you a great, fruitful time ahead. I now hand over the session to Dr. R. David Kumar, sir, the principal of GCRJY and the regional joint director for Zone 1 and Zone 2 of Andhra Pradesh Collegiate Education. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Annapurna, the IKC coordinator of this college. Um, so I'm happy that the Department of Commerce and CIE, in collaboration with CSD, Rajmandri, is organizing a wonderful webinar, national webinar on innovation ecosystem in higher education institutions for career opportunities and economic search. So I welcome Dr. Rudra, um, the chairman of CSD Rajmandri. And I also welcome um, Venkat Rettigaru, the founder of TTS. These two are resource persons for today's webinar and they speak on the innovation in higher education institutions and the uh, innovation ecosystem for career opportunities and uh, economic search. So I'm very happy the Department of Commerce, the HOD Ratnamani Kimgaru and his team and the coordinator for Center for Innovation, Incubation, Entrepreneurship. So the main focus that we are going in the next couple of years, uh, especially in our post Coming, coming up with this kind of skill development activities. Mm, seminar uh, for all our students and so that they come across Our main intention and our main vision for next three to four years, next vision. We wanted to make this college as employer's choice. So that is the only single point agenda, employer's choice. Uh, that means our vision and uh, based on that, our vision is to, uh, if any company would like to, wants to if any company wants to recruit students, in fact, uh, some employees first should look at this college. That's our 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 target. So, like that, we are moving. So, um, we had already uh, many workshops like kind of this, and then uh, what? But now. Strength of the department is 1,425 and 22 well qualified faculty members are working in the department. Dr. David Kumar Yaru, principal and RTD for Zone 1 and Zone 2 parliamentary college education. Dr. A. E. Amapurna, IPSC coordinator, Dr. Rudra, Garu, chairman, Center for Skill Development Rajmandri, Sri M. Venkatred Garu, founder of TTS, Dr. M. R. Gautam, 
डीन एकेडमिक्स श्रीजी सुनील सी आई जी इनोवेशन इंक्यूबेशन एंड इंटरप्रेन कोऑर्डिनेटर श्रीजी सायम गर्व हेड सेंटर पर किल्लावल के राजमंडरी एंड ऑल फैकल्टी मेंबर्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड अदर पार्ट स्टूडेंट्स अभी भी मार नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू मेंशन सम इंसेक्स ऑफ़ दी कोलैबोरेशन विथ सेंटर पर स्किल डेवलपमेंट the college and center for skill development believe that collaboration and cooperation will promote more effective use of each of their resources and provide each of them with enhanced opportunities both the department government college ramos rajmandri and the center for skill development intend to cooperate and focus their efforts and cooperation within the area of entrepreneurship and innovation development the scope of the collaboration with psd is the graduates from the institution will be supported in technological applications innovation and competitiveness for better careers we believe that close cooperation between the two parties would be of major benefit to the student community to enhance their skills and knowledge center for skill development will give valuable inputs to the department in teaching training methodology and shall conduct iterative trainings trainings so so that the students fit into the industrial scenario meaningfully regarding industrial exposure both the department and in the center for skill development will give an insight into the latest developments requirements of the industries the csd to permit the faculty and students of the department to visit its group of companies and also involve the industrial training programs for the department the industrial training and exposure provided to students and faculty so this association will build confidence and prepare the students to have a smooth transition from academic to working career regarding research and development both the parties have agreed to carry out the joint research activities in the fields of management training business and entrepreneurship skill development regarding skill development programs center for skill development Train the students of department on the emerging technologies in order to bridge the skill gap and make them institution ready. Guest lectures extended the necessary support to deliver guest lectures trainings to the students of the department on the technology trends and in house requirements. For the development from faculty development programs, CSD. Center for Skill Development trained the faculty of the department for important training as per the institution requirement considering the national occupational standards in concerned sector available. Regarding placement of placement of trained students, Center for Skill Development will actively engage the training and placement of students of the department into internships, jobs, and will facilitate placements. Depart the department will have to establish enterprises by the trained students. To do your remarks, I hand over the session to academic coordinator, NPC coordinator, and so on. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Good afternoon, one and all. This is uh, Sunil Kumar Dhuburi, Assistant Professor of Computer Science, um, Coordinator, Center for Innovation and Incubation Center, Government College, Rajmundry. As you are, as you are aware that the Government College Autonomous is in forefront in adapting to new circumstances and provide vivid opportunities 
to students by incubating innovative ideas of bright students and show its might to convert them into startups. With this object in mind, the college has initiated the CAE for providing a platform to inculcate an inventive bent of mind among the budding entrepreneurs of the college to nurture their creative genius into innovative ideas and to shape their enthusiasm into mini startups by providing necessary infrastructure and guidance. The Center for Innovation and Incubation and Entrepreneurship was established in uh, 2016 and 17 academic year. It intends to create awareness, offer exposure, and to incubate the pioneering enterprises emanating from the students. It is inaugurated on 8th November 2016 in a spacious cubicle attached to the Learning Resource Center of the College. For effective functioning of the center, a committee has been constituted with the team of enthusiastic students assisted by senior faculty to facilitate and monitor its activities. The center has been active and gathered a score of ideas out of which nine different ideas from the students have been submitted to potential departments for incubation and furtherance. Further, the CAE encourages students and faculty to apply and protect their intellectual property rights in the form of patents and etc. Training programs in this direction are being conducted for the faculty as well as the students. With the efforts of the center, two patents have been published by the government of India and two more projects are getting ready by the students of IOT. Uh, and one among them is a social distance detector camera um, for uh, this uh, recent scenarios as well as um, uh, persons who are wearing a mask and who are not wearing the mask. Um, it need to uh, update in the database those who are uh, wearing attending the college uh, with wearing the mask and uh, who are not attending the college without uh, proper way, uh, wearing the mask. Uh, that idea is under uh, incubation right now uh, by the students of uh, Internet of Things, UC. In spite of sincere efforts from the center, the ideas have been facing problems in crossing the pre-incubation level. And hence, in industria academia linkage is essential to make them into profitable startups. Our recent MOE with CSD, Rajamundri, has made our wish possible to convert the ideas into profitable startups. In this context, I sincerely thank the management of CSD for entering into an MOE with the college. I also thank the Department of Commerce, particularly Dr. Pranapurna Garu, Faculty of Commerce and IKC coordinator for her sincere efforts in making the linkage possible. Uh, with this brief report of, on the CIE, I conclude now by thanking all the people involved in providing me with this wonderful opportunity. Thank you.
So now I request uh, Maniratnam, who has been professor in uh, commerce, to give a brief introduction of our today's uh, speaker, D. Mudradar, in a short way. Madam will be introducing and followed by uh, the most invited uh, speech, speech by our uh, motivating uh, presentation from our Dr. Rudragal, who is going to give us a, a talk on the need for innovation in higher education institutions. As for the quality norms too, creating an environment an ecosystem for innovation is most essential. As I have already mentioned, like uh, students from promoting them, giving them a life uh, base after leaving the colleges, higher education system, to just make them uh, fit for the today's and the tomorrow's uh, challenges, like Say, let us uh, say they should turn out to become job providers. If one entrepreneurship emerges, it will lead definitely to at least a thousand plus employment opportunities for the masses. So, this uh, demographic dividend which India is going to enjoy over the next 25 to 30 years of time, this century, we should say, uh, we can say that India is having the best dividend of demographic dividend in the workforce. And this is the need of the art. So, I request Maniratna Madam to give her brief introduction of our uh, most uh, patron who has uh, supported us all the way, CSD trade person, Dr. D. Drada. There is a small technical issue, I think. Uh, shortly, she will be done. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, T. Madhiratnam, faculty in the Department of Commerce, take the pleasure to introduce the rich profile of Dr. Rudra, Chairman at Centre for Skill Development, Mentor, Atal Innovation Mission in Niti Ayam, Government of India, Initiator of Skill Development Association, President of Institution Innovation Council, Promoted by Ministry of HRD Government of India, Senior Professor, Technical Institutions. He is professional with 25 years of experience in industry, academia, and entrepreneurship. He is a principal consultant for Shelter Group since 2019 and allotment. His academics are PhD skill development from Andhra University, PhD supply chain and management from CMG University. MBA marketing from Ambedkar University, among others. He is awarded recognized as exemplary mentor of change by Niti Ayog, Government of India. Other two ISBN indexed books on supply chain management and skill development. Recognized as best teacher 2009 and 2010 in the Polarity Institution. All India star performer of Pharmaceutical Pen. We are happy to have you as our key speaker for today's webinar. Now, I hand over this session to Dr. Rudra Chaiposan, CSC, Rajmani. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much for your kind note, ma'am. 
now uh, may I proceed with the presentation uh, i request the uh, the host uh, to enable the share option of my screen Uh, sir, uh, may I request you to uh, uh, enable the uh, the share? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's coming, sir. Just yeah. Coming, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It has come. Uh, at the outset, I uh, thank uh, the principal uh, uh, David sir uh, for uh, giving this opportunity and Department of Commerce, the head Rathamani uh, sir and IQAC uh, coordinator Anupurna uh, ma'am, and also. Uh, the young and dynamic Sunil sir, uh, who has been uh, uh, IAAC, like you uh, know, institutional innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, with a brief report. I'm quite delighted. In fact, you know, I'm uh, quite excited to join the uh, you know hands of such a great institution. Now, uh, uh, in fact, you know, my responsibility is doubled uh, to make uh, your efforts amplify with the association. Now, uh, I uh, humbly present uh, uh, the, today the topic, the need for the innovation in the higher education institutions. Uh, in fact, it is the need of the app, uh, uh, with the institutions are uh, shaping into uh, a different context. Uh, we feel uh, the innovation is inevitable. In the higher education institutions, and uh, there is a because there is a changing climate for the higher education because uh, the higher education institutions or the universities are no longer in the previous format. The formats are quite dynamic and the uh, formats are quite changing, which I see uh, it has uh, it has faced many more challenges today even before that is history uh, because earlier getting the people into the higher education is an issue. Uh, now many more because the education has been uh, given an access to many. It is uh, facing many more challenges uh, than uh, what it was yesterday, and uh, it has seen a, a, a critical partner for the future. In fact, when you can see the foreign universities, uh, it, it, every university or every higher education institution is a contributing factor for the economy. Now there is a similar role. The Indian conglomerates, like Indian institutions, are also in a, uh, are also facing, and now they should also become a critical partner uh, for the, the future of uh, the country and the economy. And uh, the performance expectations of these inside the higher education does not align with an outside higher education. So uh, there is a uh, mismatch also uh, is being always criticized. Now that uh, you know, bridging is being is also is. Uh, is called for. There is a mounting pressure on the higher education institutions to perform better, which can match to the outside uh, you know, uh, the world. And uh, there is an increase in the uh, you know, more accountability also as we are we are going. Uh, it is uh, based on institutional performance is also being gauged, and uh, more accountability is being uh, placed. And uh, higher education is definitely, I can say, it is under attack. Now uh, the higher education should should prove itself uh, to be more accountable and also more performance oriented. And uh, you know there is an uh, now if you follow the traditional methods, uh, it is you know it is often very difficult. Time and again we should change our path so as to meet the the budding requirements of the industry or the budding requirements of the institutions and uh, the student expectations is also going up industry expectations are going up and we have to have a uh, much more better align uh, with this uh, you know, the in, uh, uh, and uh, now uh, there is no chain left behind there is no student left behind now now every student we should be uh, accountable for uh, so even after the institution also, so that is creating uh, no, the mounting pressure on the institutions. We have to be more accountable in maintaining the data, and also we should be more accountable. It has been a case with the uh, some of the universities. The what is the there is an impact study like you know, after we meet a batch of students, what is the economy addition happened uh, with the particular batch of students? So how the economy is being uh, contributed by that set of the, the people. So now every student, every child is important so there is always a you know, uh, the amount of pressure on 
the institutions. And uh, uh, now there is also a challenge. Some, sometimes the college degrees, the media degrees is not providing the suitable case. So what they are studying is sometimes is having uh, misalignment what is available. In fact, there is, uh, you know, uh, because our uh, curriculums or academia are being standardized and uh, sometimes it is, uh, you know, it is not giving a suitable career to them. So what is the uh, solution? So that is also been, uh, uh, been accountable. Now the institution is also uh, bound to be accountable in this area. And uh, now if you can see the, what are the emerging challenges, there is a uh, you know increasing differentiation in the, the higher education. As we see, the degrees are uh, being deferred now. We are we are we are creating our uh, education and uh, we are differentiating and uh, creating more and more courses and which is aligning to the education, uh, which is aligning to the uh, the current markets. And also there is a transformation on the general educational curriculum. So now no longer we are having a, a common set of the curriculum. We are having a specialized curriculum, and uh, that uh, differentiation is also uh, you know is needed needed. And also they are changing the faces of the faculty. Now uh, now the industry people are coming forward, and now the faculty is no longer a traditional faculty. So and uh, there is a blended education is also happening. And uh, there is a global uh, surge in the global faculty and the student mobility. So uh, there is an internationalization of the education is also happening. A lot of tie-ups is also happening. It, it is all about you know how you uh, uh, expand your web of uh, uh, your network, and uh, we can access the global faculty, and we can also ensure the, the student mobility to the various institutions as well as the the, the various uh, box of. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there is WhatsApp networks, and uh, now now the innovation has been a, a new norm. So a uh, couple of the developments in the higher education which I uh, try to bring in here is uh, now slowly there is an invisible college format is coming up. I think you know uh, we uh, this national webinar is being kind of a you know invisible format. So slowly uh, now the, with the advent of the second wave of the COVID now. Uh, we don't know like uh, what is the government norms. There is a pressure uh, from the, the government also uh, to address this uh, pandemic. Now slowly we are having individual college format is coming up. Now the students is also the various parts of the life, uh, various parts of uh, uh, the you know, geographical uh, entities. They are, they can uh, they are coming together and uh, they are learning. And uh, there is a there is a changing traditional student. Now we cannot expect the student to you know, regularly attend the college and now uh, you know, uh, attend to the lectures and start taking it. We have to have some kind of an innovation in uh, uh, meeting the student needs. So there is a traditional student format is also uh, changing. So slowly innovation is coming into the educational curriculum. And there is an uh, you know, uh, there is a mounting pressure on demonstrating value. So what is the value addition? We are giving to the student. So uh, from the institutional point of view, there is a there is a pressure that every student has to contribute. Every every child has to give his own value. So we should understand. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know, there is a uh, you must be aware. Like you know, there is a five of the high accelerating uh, students. What is the value we are giving for the medium for the slow learners? What is that uh, value we are adding? So that is been uh, is there, and uh, it has been mounting pressures on the institution, especially the higher education institutions. And uh, there is an uh, revolution in the middle skills jobs also. So it does it does now the student is been given now with an advent of the new educational policy. There is a multiple exits and the multiple entries of the students. So uh, once the student leaves at a particular point, he is into the job again. There is a uh, you know, chance that he can come back and start pursuing the certification courses with us. So there is the institutional format also. There is a uh, middle skill enhancement. So there is always a, a chance for the institution to go forward and have a linkage with the, the industries and the skill them as well. And uh, those kind of a new format of the things is also happening. So innovation has been a, a new norm. And uh, now college has you know, the institution, the higher educational institution, even as, as a private entity, it is basically uh, you know, should create the public good. It is should be a public institution and uh, should understand society at large and organization at, at large 
and start you know, uh, nurturing uh, the innovation within the institution. So uh, that is the, the need that we have. And uh, we have, uh, you know, there is a force that, you know, we should have a lifelong partnership with the, the students. I think I must congratulate uh, uh, the government college, government arts college of the Rajmundry is uh, maintaining uh, this kind of the norms and really getting the, the good scores in the MAC. I think probably it will stand as a role model uh, for the, the remaining institutions. And, uh, you know, we are uh, quite feel... Uh, uh, I think you know, we feel uh, really fortunate to associate with uh, such a uh, visionary institutions and uh, we are very uh, uh, we are hopeful to add value uh, to the uh, elite institution like uh, government bodies. So now, let me uh, know uh, the, the, uh, no, based on the theoretical part, uh, what we feel, there are the different types of the innovations in the higher education institutions. Uh, one is a sustainable uh, innovation where you have your own process system uh, is in place and add modification so that it can improve the existing product or system. So, I mean, your existing system can be modified, can be enhanced. And uh, the second one, you have a disruptive innovation where you can bring, like, you know, the center for innovation kind of a initiatives where an altogether new thing you can bring in and uh, start uh, creating the disruption and bring the significant change. And uh, you know, uh, within, uh, uh, within uh, addition of the CSD uh, with your esteemed institution, we feel uh, like you know, we can bring some kind of a, a disruptive innovations in the institutions, like setting up an entrepreneurship clinics and uh, you know, setting up, uh, you know, registering the companies and making them profitable and uh, creating the employment within the institution. And the, the third and the most important, we both can uh, do uh, the innovation by design, can uh, develop the breakthrough ideas, keeping uh, the human background in mind. Because, you know, the recently uh, with uh, uh, Niti Ayo, we have, uh, we have just concluded uh, the Community Day celebrations, like 14, 15, 16, we had a Community Day on the, we started on the occasion of the birth anniversary of uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. And uh, you know, we have observed the community uh, practices and we feel such kind of the innovations can be brought into the institution which at the community at large can uh, also get benefited. And uh, you know, I just want to give a brief on uh, you know, what is an innovation by design or the design thinking. This has been a buzzword, in fact, which is launched by the Harvard. Uh, so it is like any organization can develop the breakthrough ideas in the products that provides a sustainable and a disruptive innovation in the market. So the sustainable and the disruption both can be uh, merged if you can have the design thinking. And uh, it is a human-centered, a prototype-driven, and uh, innovation can be applied to a product, services, or a particular business design. So here, uh, we try to bring in uh, some kind of a design thinking in, uh, uh, models uh, into the uh, community problems and can be really uh, uh, that, uh, no, uh, the human-centered uh, design and innovation. And uh, this, uh, what we thoroughly feel is Innovation is a skill that can be taught, it managed well, and becomes the culture of the institutions and organizations large. We as an organization and uh, you know, uh, in joining hands with the institution like you, we can definitely bring up that innovation uh, uh, culture uh, because that is, we thoroughly uh, believe that is, a, that is a skill can be taught and uh, you know, that can slowly convert into an entrepreneurship and uh, at large, uh, we can realize the uh, vision and vision of the institutions. Yes. And uh, 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 we strongly believe there should be a, a synergy between the teaching and the research in the educational institutions. And uh, because uh, we, because teaching has been uh, taking the front seat and research is taking the, the back seat, now they, the, the time has come, both should go hand in hand. And uh, you know, what, I, what we feel, uh, being a fellow academician, what I feel, uh, research will definitely excite uh, the students. So it's always, you know, uh, more than the, the teaching classes, the research or the activity base will really excite the students. Now, that particular excitement we should really uh, bring into the front line and uh, make both a synergy. And uh, by doing this, uh, you know, the research, the students gain and develop the essential skills and uh, they will gather and sensitize. Uh, uh, and uh, they will create the knowledge. And uh, it's actually, it should not be only a student burden, 
or a teacher burden and the, especially the student teachers and the research staff will get a fresher insight into the research conventions and habits so they, they can also learn how to teach so uh, how to teach and how to deliberate how to invite right? so it is necessary to build the specialized research for many institutions and also it is necessary to harness the, the skills necessary to in, enhance employability so employability uh, is also one of the major criteria so uh, once we have apart from the entrepreneurship for an enterprise also they require an employee so once we have the skill of employability they will join hands together and build the bigger organizations and uh, what we thoroughly feel like innovation can be uh, taught so uh, it all requires understanding the the current requirement as uh, mr uh, sunil sir was uh, uh, talking about uh, you can work on the, the recent issues like you know whether how many are wearing the mask whether the social distance has been uh, you know uh, has been maintained or not otherwise the proliferation all these things can be can be really brought into the the lab and uh, this innovation can be taught so if this requires you know a, a culture of the innovation as the student so always you know start working on uh, 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 the current problems and also you know what all the you know the efforts requires to establish a ecosystem amongst the uh, uh, higher education institution creating uh, this innovation ecosystem itself slowly will will uh, will bring the entrepreneurship ecosystem and uh, you know uh, the activities such as uh, intellectual property rights i'm very glad to know that i already two patents have been published i think in the in the times to come we can identify more problems and start uh, you know filing this ip and uh, we can ensure these particular products can go for the commercialization by technological innovations and the promoted widely uh, you know across the nation and uh, this uh, you know the institutions can be a, 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 an area of the uh, of the place for developing several organizations so you know we firmly believe the innovation can be taught by having uh, an ecosystem of the innovation in entrepreneurship and uh, you know as anurana ma'am was uh, repeatedly was telling like you know the institution should be a job creators yes we do also believe uh, this uh, you know the intervention with the csb and uh the government college of the rajmundry will be a, a major job creator and uh, and uh, also as david sir the principal sir was telling uh, the government college should be the institution of choice for the uh, entrepreneurs uh, so our, our, uh, for the employers they look for like you know what kind of a uh, uh, products they are releasing so we should be that is quite possible uh with uh, having that innovation ecosystem in place in the institution and uh, already entrepreneurship as rathamani uh, sir was telling entrepreneurship has been taken as a subject and that has been a case with many universities also so entrepreneurship subject in, in, as it is been introduced in the foundation level there is a you know recent revision in several universities also uh, earlier some foundation courses were replaced by the entrepreneurship so slowly like you know the present uh, uh, the academic institutions are realizing the importance of the entrepreneurship and the innovation and they are introducing that as a subject and they are taking forward and uh, because india is having a path breaking scope for the innovation because we are the largest uh, populated country and uh, you know most dense country and also we have been exposed with the foreign practices and uh, with that particular thing india is having a Uh, a far better scope for the innovation, and now with the you know, with our current uh, uh, Modi ji's uh, you know, campaign of the Atmanir Bharat is also giving a good scope for uh, developing uh, you know innovation. And uh, now slowly our you know our education is transforming towards an entrepreneurship uh, endeavors. And uh, you know what we feel this research and development uh, being in every department or every organization. will be the catalyst for the innovation so we should always be uh, giving a good scope and uh, good encouragement for the r&d in the institutions and uh, i i you know i support uh, the department of commerce which has come out with a uh, you know the commerce lab and uh, we are also contemplating to uh, bring out an entrepreneurship entrepreneurial clinic on certain days where you know we really take certain things at the start the feasibility study or the viability study and make it as a commercial enterprises and this you uh, know the the initial startup firms can be run by the innovators as an entrepreneurs 
those students who have come out with an ideas can become entrepreneurs we give the hand holding to them and uh, and also these large incumbent firms with their specialized agri staff also can be brought in and uh, can be having collaborative efforts with us and uh, you know with the launch of the, the uh, ministry of uh, education promoted institutional innovation council is like the way the csc had and also slowly we will also have you know the center uh, like uh, uh, innovation and uh, incubation and entrepreneurship cie uh, also the cells like that also will will become an iron of the excellence in the in the you know in the future to come that's what by uh, strongly believe in and uh, you know what we feel uh, the innovation process in the higher education institution uh, can be adopted by you uh, know uh, by following a certain uh, steps it is to you know uh, we should ensure there is an uh, the students the institution should have the ability to apply the knowledge of the economics and uh, they should have the ability to design and conduct experiments as well as analyze and interpret data and uh, the the students and the faculty should have the ability to design a system component of the process to meet the desired needs and uh, uh, the the institution should have the liberty to function on a multidisciplinary teams this has been a practice with the iits iims probably you know or the reputed institutions probably the institutions uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the you know the tier 2 tier 3 also can understand the importance of working in a multidisciplinary team rather than isolating themselves so uh, you know they can also create a difference and uh, it's an ability to identify and formulate and solve the real time uh, community problems so uh, we should identify and bring out to the platform and start working on that and uh, it's, it's also an understanding of the professional and ethical uh, resp- uh, you know, uh, responsibility and uh, finally you know we should also uh, make the faculty and the students of the higher education institutions to communicate very effectively between the departments outside the departments and outside institutions and uh, bring in a seamless and flat organizations which uh, you know the innovation ecosystem can be nurtured and that can be uh, definitely kindled and uh, now as the whole innovation should lead to an entrepreneurship by you know when we say the entrepreneurship definitely you know uh, the department of commerce will play a major role by developing a business plan and uh, also facilitating a, a field survey market survey and uh, you know developing some kind of a feasibility studies and uh, especially you know exploring some sponsorship opportunities or some kind of a seed seed funding and this will this will benefit the the institutions for improving uh, the ease of doing business and uh, building up a, a strong uh, business foundation and uh, this will improve uh, the financial support and the aid because we are working on a commercialization uh, with a, a proper uh, return of investment uh, methods so this also can work and uh, these redirecting some of the surpluses to the you know again uh, you know for the rd and uh, some utility on uh, improved quality of life and by all these uh, you know we can definitely have a uh, you know this very good satisfaction of creating a social impact so uh, within the rajmundri we can definitely create a lot of a lot of importance and uh, you know a lot of satisfaction and uh, you know we can measure the social impact of as we are talking in the earlier slides uh, the institutional uh, performance will be measured in terms of the social impact or the economic impact also so that economic impact also we can measure by having innovation turned into entrepreneurship and finally i just want to conclude uh, that our institution and the other government institutions teachers individuals budding entrepreneurs in innovators and the aspirants constantly need to communicate directly with the higher education institutions and uh, because the higher education institutions and uh, as a as a way today if you understand uh, they are becoming an uh, you know facilitators for the innovation and the innovation uh, entrepreneurship and they stay updated on the potential opportunities related to innovation and entrepreneurship so uh, with an uh, you know with the uh, new policies coming in it is giving a, a, a institution as a platform for uh creating uh, you know a multiple knowledge houses so it is becoming a like institutional becoming a capacity building centers so uh, i hope you know with the multiple linkages with uh, the the government college is going uh, with an our intervention also will definitely make the institution as a capacity building center as an innovation hub 
and also a center for uh, entrepreneurship excellence. So this higher education institution must play and uh, would play a vital role in promoting, fostering, developing and nurture innovation leading to a good entrepreneurship uh, revolution in the India and this is go uh, like a mission. And uh, the, now this is the time to kindle the innovation in the uh, higher education institutions and uh, which is already been kindled by, I think, you know, uh, from the words of the Sunil, uh, we can understand it's already been kindled. Uh, for the rest of the followers, you become a top bearer, right? Uh, so with this, I, I thank everyone uh, for uh, your time. Uh, and uh, as uh, it's a, a starting uh, uh, presentation, and we have uh, one more speaker, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Vikar Reddy will be speaking. He's also you know, uh, my colleague, uh, part of the Natal Innovation Mission, and uh, we are on this mission in promoting entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Rudra, for your wonderful presentation on the innovation for higher education. I'm Sayyidam Patel, head for Center for State Development. Uh, I would like to introduce Sri N. Mr. Reddy David, from MS, founder for Limited Team Solutions, TDS, and then his master's in UK in the area of specialization. Intelligence systems and robotics. Having a patient, passion for robotics started tech team solutions in the city of destiny in the year 2014 with a motto of developing passion in any graduates in the area of electronics, robotics, artificial intelligence, IoT, and other trending technologies through innovation, innovative methods. Having an experience of six years as technical trainer. Speaker, come present, presenter, conducted many workshops and seminars on emerging technologies to different engineering college students. Awarded by many engineering colleges for his unique style of motivational and encouraging speeches to young graduates on entrepreneurship challenges and innovation trends. He was a successful entrepreneur to bring awareness among youth on trending technologies of tomorrow world to adopt new skills for 21st century. Having a futuristic vision, wishes to encourage student entrepreneurship program, introduced a special program called Raise Renovation and Innovation of Student Entrepreneurs. To introduce high school students, hidden talent to the society as tomorrow's world full of entrepreneurs globally. Designed a special program for training of teachers, on trending technologies, TOT, called e Gurudev, with an objective of offering practical training and making them in line to National Education Policy 2020 and bringing revolutionary pedagogical methods at schools. Presiding as Chief Operating Officer for Vision of a Motivation Initiative by Visionary Gurukul Private Limited, as he is TDS, based out of Vishakhapatnam, it is concentrating on training and innovation product development, embedded system and robotics. It is the first ISO 9001 and 2015 certified organization in the domain of robotics. He successfully established and trained 180, more than 180 other tinkering labs throughout the Andhra Pradesh. Executed two research and development projects under Andhra Pradesh Innovation Society, successfully completed central government AGDSM project, a joint venture with Minister of Power Government of India. It trained more than 10,000 students, expanded branches in AP and other six locations. It offers, TDS offers customized solutions in the areas of embedded system and robotics and many other areas. Now I request N. Bengal Reddy Garu to proceed uh, the presentation on the topic today, Innovation Ecosystem for Career Opportunities and Academic Search.
ഫോർവേഡ് <laughs> So today I would like to share some insight views uh, in the part of innovation ecosystem where you can create your career opportunities on the technical end and at the same time the economic search how you can create that economic growth towards the journey of the entrepreneurship. So let me share this screen. Uh, So, uh, today I would like to share some few insights about the career opportunities and economic search. As being a technical person, when I started learning my electronic subject, I am basically an NCA graduate. So, during my engineering standards uh, in way past 2006-2010, engineering was, an, uh, was something like, you know, very great achievement. being an engineer and you have a lot of opportunities at that point of time and there was a huge uh, software development during that 10 years back uh, story but after 10 years you can see now there is a lot of opportunities which has changed uh, students for multiple disciplinary uh, engineering you know whether it is csc or lc or triple e or whatever the different kinds of engineers it is about the subject what they learn and the practical knowledge what they have so today when we are talking about innovation ecosystem you can find out there are lot of things in an ecosystem and in ecosystem each particular wing has its own importance and it has got its own uh, priorities and today we are going to start uh, see the ecosystem in one particular direction where the higher education students or higher education institutions should ensure that you know this kind of development is uh, made so when you talk about an ecosystem in an ecosystem you have the government which created the policies which ensures that you know all the beneficiaries supporting uh, things in the environment and there are companies who uh, look forward for development of the products technically and at the same time uh, development of new companies and on the other hand there are professionals who supports uh, students as well as institutions as being a mentor and supporters and there are some companies like you know support like an incubators and there are angel investors funding uh, for people and like that in an ecosystem you have got multiple directions or uh, multiple ways of making an innovation to an existence because every innovation has its own uh, importance and every idea that a student create or a student wants to develop has required a lot of support so in this innovation ecosystem uh, each everyone has got its own importance and today we are going to see something uh, one thing in the particular ecosystem is startup culture as you are aware that you know pre covid situation that is two years back uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship when we talk about startup companies when we are talking about uh, career opportunities uh, people still has seen a uh, sort of feeling that you know you should be a white collar job or you should have a mandatory software format or we should learn the cc plus plus language or something like that but whereas the startup culture uh, during the covid situation and the post covid situation you can see the difference that you know more number of entrepreneurs came into existence and this is where the first step has been taken entrepreneurship journey has created a lot of opportunities for higher education students as well as institutions and it is becoming a common subject now how we used to have science social maths as a basic subjects when we were studying at our school age now entrepreneurship has become as one of the great subject now and being an entrepreneur myself i i say that you know uh, in coming future india has a great potential to create more entrepreneurs and at the same time there are a lot of students with a lot of ideas as well as lot of institutions where i visit to colleges as well as the 
other institutions, I see a lot of faculty members sitting down together, creating those new programs or new product developments at all. So, right now, uh, compared to the post-COVID, uh, the pre-COVID and the post-COVID situation, these key parameters, something like entrepreneurship, has got a huge importance. Along with that, Industry 4.0 Technologies, where we need to concentrate more on how this 4.0 Technologies like 3D printing, big data, and uh, robotics, advanced embedded systems, AR, VR technologies. There are a lot of new technologies which came into the picture. So, entrepreneurship journey along with Industry 4.0 Technologies will create more opportunities for the further higher education uh, institutions as well as the students. And how these opportunities can be created and what directions it is getting into is something like this. More opportunities can be created with the new technologies, something let's see if we find out EV industry. Till one year back, electric vehicles or EV industry is at a very low condition. Recently, most of the uh, mobility of electronics has been increased. Even government created new policies. By 2013, we have to ensure that, you know, 30% of the vehicles has to be converted into electric so that, you know, we can reduce pollution. We, we should not have these kind of pandemic situations again. And similarly, artificial intelligence, which is a uh, very great subject. And uh, right now, everyone is using Amazon. Everyone is doing shopping online. So these kind of subjects are creating more opportunities. Along with this, there are few other subjects, something like drones, the online education platforms. And if you can find out, uh, Swiggy is a matter all these companies who are creating a new trend and a change or a wave, which is creating a new impact to create more opportunities for all the students as well as institutions to have their own intention to create and to solve the problems. So these are all the different opportunities uh, which are supported by the uh, present technological opportunities. In this particular flagship, uh, from the government of India, Niti Ayo has created one opportunity for school students, which is called Atal Tinkering Labs. As a part of Technic Solutions, we are happy that, you know, right now, uh, all over Andhra Pradesh, there are more than 1,000 labs which have been sanctioned, out of which 250 plus labs have been installed by Technic Solutions, where these school students have been exposed to do about extremely printing, STEM education, and a lot of mechanical tools with their own hands. So this kind of practical knowledge, this kind of practical equipment are are they are being there with the uh, school level, and this is going to be creating that entrepreneurship skills as well as startup ideas, whatever the idea they have got, they can create, create the stuff, and this will ensure that you know they come up with the new technologies connected. So using these technologies. All these opportunities, like whoever the students of different categories, whether he is interested in computers, whether he is interested in designing, whether he is interested in uh, solving a particular problem, so they can uh, look at the opportunities in different uh, technologies like EV industries, artificial intelligence. These are very few, and there are more number of opportunities that they can create. And how they can ensure that you know this opportunity can be upgraded is by taking up challenges. So, some challenges is something like this. And as everyone knows, that, you know, there are more uh, companies or institutions who are uh, offering a lot of opportunities for uh, students as well as institutions. As uh, very recently said by one of the faculty that they have got patented with two ideas. That was really great that government uh, college uh, Rajmandri has got two patents. And we look forward to support uh, more number of students in creating and solving those problems. And what different kinds of problems they can select, it, it depends upon their interest. It might be in agriculture, it might be in uh, automobile sector, it might be in designing sector, or it might be the different parameters. So here I'm showing you a few of the examples uh, where they can take those challenges and each and every challenge is the biggest opportunity that they can create. Even uh, when we are talking about the space uh, related stuff, I think maybe few years back, no one has thought about the space tourism. No one has thought about creating bricks uh, with the help of moon sign. Uh, right now, IIT Delhi people are creating a brick which is made out of moon, moon sand so that the construction cost can be reduced on the moon surface. So these kind of different challenges, different thoughts, and even see 
right now we are looking at pv industry uh, talking about you know production of pollution and some of some of it aluminum based batteries future we are going to get hydrogen based batteries so this different kinds of challenges will create different opportunities in a uh, new sectors these new sectors are the one where we can create more career opportunities example i would like to take in for artificial intelligence it takes subject of artificial intelligence you have a huge data coming out from different users example like if you open up youtube whatever the video you look at you will get the similar kind of views so if you look at news you look at sports or you look at comedy videos so you have coming up with the same set of views that is what the artificial intelligence they are using in the back end and at the same time there is a lot of data that is being accumulated so we need a data scientist now. so previously when you talk about this job it is an earlier program or data analyst but right now we have a data scientist or data uh, analyst or we have business analyst so there is a new way of opportunities which are being created and what are the opportunities is being created it is about the challenges what they need so i would like to say the higher education institution should look forward to take up the challenges Talk to the respective students or the industrial students to take such kind of different challenges. For example, if you take the Rajmundi or the East Bengal area, we are having a lot of uh, agricultural fields. So we can create a lot of missionaries. Uh, recently, we we got one of the uh, requests from one of the person saying that you know instead of cutting the coconut uh, by a manpower, why don't we use a drone and use a cutter on the top? And we can cut the uh, coconuts, or we can get down the coconuts at every uh, time period, so that there is no loss of human manpower. Because a lot of people uh, climb the tree and they just fall down, so they can use drone with a camera and some sort of. So this kind of ideas uh, can be created or can be supported by higher education institutions, so that students take it as a challenge, and those challenges will be the creation for the next opportunities. And whoever might take the challenges, they have to look at the things. in a development side so whenever you take up a concept and those concepts has to be done with the research and during the research they should have the complete segment analysis so what are the problem statement they take and what are the research they are going to uh, do it on it that will give us the best solution and using the best solution we are going to understand to what extent that can be uh, creating the opportunities as man said like you know we need to have 1000 uh, Uh, employees to be selected, or uh, see, uh, getting that number, uh, the massive number can be created based on the best problem solving method. Example, if you take Swiggy or you take Rapido or if you take Uber or Ola, see, they have created a huge number of opportunities. But the the problem statement need more analysis as well. If I take one more example, like Oyo, they have created a wonderful opportunity, but unfortunately, uh, very recently they have been falling down because of the way they are. So whenever they take up a challenge, when they want to create that opportunity, the concept, the research, analysis, and once they come up with the product development, they should ensure whether they are doing it as a product side or the service side. So product development uh, on the product side is different, and service side is different, and they should ensure the quality, the analysis part, and at the same time the execution part. Because the end user is the one who is going to use that particular product, and they should ensure that you know the quality is maintained. So we are putting all this together uh, when we want to create that opportunity for a good product or an idea. They should also be uh, having this kind of collaborations or associations. I would like to uh, congratulate the government uh, college department that has been associated with CSC, and similarly the CIE, uh, the department what we are looking at. So, Maker labs are there, fab labs are there, and Niti Aayog is creating collaborations with different companies and different institutions also. So higher education institutions should have a very good collaboration with companies who are moving forward with uh, solving problems because they are the ones who is going to uh, give us the fundamental knowledge because they does a lot of research that will help the students to solve the problem a bit earlier and they will also understand the reality what is happening. Because when I heard one of the company in Hyderabad, they are working for drones, and uh, they are uh, solving the problem for uh, NTPC. So while they are doing uh, problem solving for NTPC, they have got one more opportunity, and that opportunity has been given to one of the institutions there in Hyderabad, and they have given to several students. So now the several students are also working for that particular companies also. 
So higher education institutions uh, should have collaborations and associations with companies and startups and at the same time the people who are living in the same line so that the students get benefited with those associations and why not? They might be the CEOs or they might be the CEOs for the future of those companies and at the same time what are the knowledge sharing methods? So higher education institutions will have a great opportunity to understand the future technology changes also. So this is one of the examples of IIT Hyderabad has been the first uh, uh, collaboration having with AI uh, accelerating research lab. And similarly, we have got IIT partner who has taken a research lab for machine learning. So, and the other example is for IIT Madras for collaboration with Rose And as yesterday, I think they will for yesterday, we heard that you know, Tesla is also coming up in India and they have confirmed their uh, uh, place. They, were, they had the talks. Uh, within the government and the Tesla management also. So these kind of associations or these kind of collaborations will help the uh, higher education institutions to understand what is coming in the future, what would be the standards that they can change to the students and what kind of opportunities that they can uh, show to the uh, students as well as the faculty members to create the next generation. So when when you talk about the growth, economic growth, this uh, example I would like to take right you now, the SpaceX, what they are doing right now. They want to occupy the Mars. So they want to create the colonies in Mars. So how the economic growth is done? It is about when you take the challenge, when you solve the problem, and once the problem is going to be the uh, output for n number of opportunities, obviously there is a huge economic thing standard. Like they will be having huge funding, they will be having huge employment, and the same time they will have the first priorities to get into the investing part. So this is one example of space which everyone knows and hyperloop the transportation methodology has been changed. So whenever we talk about the uh, economic growth along with the opportunities, it is about the problem solving. So the best problem you solve or the important problem you solve in the best way will create the opportunities. When the opportunities are created, it is just a rotation policy that we create the fund flow also. So putting all together, these are like you know, different examples I would like to show that you know, what kind of directions that they have to look into. So I would request that you know, higher education institutions should look at uh, uh, the opportunities or the economic growth in the best problem solving. Whether it might be robotics or 3D printing or big data or computational uh, things. So we have got different subjects and as everyone knows that you know, Every company is trying to create uh, its own branding, like Apple or Google or Amazon or whatever it is. So they are also coming into multiple sectors. So sectors, selection and association will help them to uh, come up with new challenges. And these challenges will help the students to create uh, new uh, concepts and ideas. And uh, we as a technical uh, company, we would like to help and serve the students at any point of time uh, to whatever the resources they require and whatever the support they require as a technical end so that, you know, they will uh, solve their problem at the earlier stage. So putting all these things together, I would like to conclude that, you know, uh, the career opportunities in a particular ecosystem and at the same time, uh, the economic search can be created only by making sure that, you know, higher education institutions can connect the students or the faculty members to solve the best problems. And the best problems will be the best opportunities, and the best opportunities will help to uh, generate more funds and the rotation flow. So that is how the flow can be done. So that's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful session. Uh, now, uh, I request uh, Dr. Sunil Garu to initiate an uh, interaction session. Any interactions? We request the students from the breakout rooms. If anyone wants to ask the question, please raise the hand so that we will make you as a panelist to ask the question.
sir, I received one question in the YouTube live, sir, uh, in the chat box. Um, one student asking me about, uh, uh, he is going to implement one mobile app for uh, uh, students uh, who are uh, not having curries at the lunch time. He is going to uh, develop an app. Uh, how to approach the companies to incubate those ideas uh, to make it viable? That is a question posted by one student in the YouTube. Yeah, uh, uh, will you take that? Sir, you can. Yeah, uh, uh, sir, it is definitely possible. Uh, initially, you know, the feasibility study need to be done. How many uh, students uh, you know, would be looking uh, for such uh, facility? Uh, I mean, you know, it's definitely a novel idea because, you know, it is definitely a problem. Somebody, you know, you know having to come from far flung places, probably, you know, they come only with that. Uh, probably you know he can that uh, he can ping and uh, that can trigger that can be a, a swiggy or a zomato kind of a model but we can address to the uh, you know uh, the current uh, students in, in, indeed it's a novel idea i think you know we can come and uh, you know uh, assist otherwise uh, there are makers of this particular app which is uh, you know uh, less than around uh, 5 to 10000 rupees one can develop an app i mean with an initial investment one can really uh, get connected to some kind of a curry points and ensure that, you know, uh, uh, he gets those particular curry. Imagine an institution like uh, Government Arts College, which is having around, uh, say, 5,000 students. In case if a 100 order comes in for the curries, right, a, a person can come and deliver and uh, he can make money out of it. I mean, sitting in the institution, one can develop. That's a definitely a good idea. Such, uh, you know, problem, this is, this is certain an innovation. Right. Uh, so, I mean, uh, no, I can see uh, definitely a new idea. Uh, you can encourage the students to come and, uh, you know, see us or the Department of Commerce, uh, either Rathamani Kim sir or, uh, you know, Anandurna ma'am or, you know, uh, CIE uh, uh, Sunil sir. Then we can uh, jointly work out uh, how do we, uh, you know, uh, really bring the solution to that. Yeah. Uh, so, close to, I think, you know, if and you... If it is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, carry on, sir. I think uh, definitely, you know, if a hundred order comes in, hundred into, you uh, know, a ten rupees a curry, so around thousand rupees per day would be around thirty thousand income uh, for a uh, for a person. If the initial investment of ten thousand uh, monthly, that uh, that thing uh, will go up, and uh, there is no pressure on the mothers to cook the you know, uh, curry while they are living in the early morning to the colleges. So probably that is the solution. That can be solution can be rolled out to the some kind of a, a schools where you know if you maintain some hygiene and all with the packing and other things, uh, definitely that's a revenue uh, generating idea. I think uh, workable idea, sir. Yeah, go on. Uh, and uh, what they need, what yeah, what they need to do is like you know, uh, as sir said, like five thousand ten thousand rupees, they can invest and try for an app where they can at least uh, get some statistics. See, the basic uh, importance of when they go for the incubation, they need some statistics and some database. So, they can collect some information, uh, see what statistics that they can come up with, at least like three colleges or five colleges or ten colleges maximum. Then, they can get into the incubation to understand, like, you know, even the others can understand only by the statistics. It is definitely a good idea. Uh, if they can try a month or five days just for a free trials. So based on the trials, then they can approach to the companies. Yeah. It starts to tell such basic problems.
Sir, one more question in the uh, live chat box, sir. Oh, one student asking about uh, he is going to make some products, uh, but in order to develop that products, he needs certain infrastructures like 3D printers uh, and other uh, security things. Um, so he is not able to effort at the time whether any company is forefront to do this, uh, uh, do the help to the students. How to approach them? Uh, Sir, uh, firstly, uh, we would be very happy to support uh, such kind of students. Uh, as you mentioned, there are some other things we lost, where we are related to every uh, each and every partner of the state. So, if they can let us know the details from which every uh, they are coming up with, so that we can uh, support them with respect to the radio lab, or uh, we can associate with AIC also, I mean, innovation centers. Which they have got 3D printers and all the basic requirements for a prototype development. Or else they can contact us uh, to the respective brands of technical solutions so that we can support them and guide them in regard to that. Okay, sir, thank you. So these are the questions uh, from the participants and sir. Uh, we request once again the participants, if there is any questions, please post in the live chat box or you can raise the hand. We will permit you to ask the ask to the research persons. Uh, now I will hand over the session to Apala Simhungaru. Very much thankful to the organizers for uh, Proposing vote of thanks on this uh, webinar, Kindling Innovation Entrepreneurship Ecosystem in Higher Educational Institutions for Career Opportunities and eco Economic Search. I, at the outset, I would like to take the privilege to thank uh, Dr. A. Anapurna, Madam, IQC Coordinator, Government College Ramos Rajmahendra for having. Uh, said about uh, the quality initiatives taken by the IQC department uh, towards enhancing and uh, sustenance of quality measures uh, in the, our college. I would also uh, thank Madam for taking several initiatives uh, in developing the quality enhancement activities uh, by conducting various events in the college both for the students as well as for the faculty members uh, to enhance their skills and knowledge in the areas. I would like to thank uh, Dr. R. David Kumar, Regional Joint Director of Higher Education, APCCA, for June 1 and 2, for having given the welcome address on this uh, webinar and told about uh, and told about the memorandum of understanding reached by the Department of Commerce and the Center for Skill Development, a great move towards uh, implementing innovative activities or innovation system into our college. And he also told that uh, the main focus in the coming three to four years uh, was on mainly on uh, innovation ecosystem development in the college by focusing on employer's choice. As a college is as an employer's choice uh, for all our students. He also told that uh, this kind of MOUs uh, will definitely help the, our educational institutions like us to grow towards innovation ecosystem in the uh, region. Then, I would like to thank uh, Dr. K. Ratmanikangaru, head of the department, the Department of Commerce, for taking this session and telling about the insights that how the Department of Commerce has been developing in terms of uh, length and breadth uh, in terms of number of courses, market-oriented courses introduced in the department for various students like BBA Digital Marketing, like BO Retail Management, BBA Logistics, mainly focusing on the skill development and uh, confidence in the students towards uh, adopting innovative system in the uh, curriculum. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Sunil Kumar, coordinator for Center for Innovation, Innovation and Entrepreneurship, for 
telling about uh, the measures taken by the CIA in the recent past to come up with uh, two patents and two projects from the students right from the starting up of the setting up of the institution and uh, his continuous efforts in making the institution a bright institution for the students and uh, creating a platform for the students uh, to develop expose develop innovation and uh, entrepreneurship skills among the students in the center i would like to thank uh, dr rudra chairman center for skill development who spoke on the need for innovation in higher education institutions he has spoken on various emerging trends and challenges that higher education institutions are uh, facing and there is a need for transformation of uh, higher education institutions uh, in the coming days and what are the opportunities available for the higher education institutions to develop a uh, innovation ecosystem in their institutions and he also told about uh, the innovation that is sustainable innovation disruptive innovation and uh, design innovation these three can bring about a change in the innovation system and inculcate innovation culture among the students uh, in the higher education institutions he also told about uh, the role of r&d which will become a catalyst for innovation in the uh, higher education institutions he also told about the innovation process how innovation can bring about uh, entrepreneurship development in the higher education institutions and he also told about how the entrepreneurship development will help in bringing economic impact as well as social impact that the higher education institutions can do through what is called as a college social responsibility and this capacity building higher education institutions can also build capacities through research and development and innovation that's what he spoke about i would like to thank sri n venkatreddy garu a resource person of this today's webinar speaking on innovation ecosystem for career opportunities and economic search he spoke about uh, various government policies and companies on the other hand developing innovative products professionals on the other hand supporting the students in the higher education institutions and investors on the other hand financing the startups new startups so from all these friends how startup culture can be brought in higher education institutions and what are the challenges that the institutions can face in bringing new startups in higher education institutions he also told about how the conceptual ideas can be researched and how the research ideas can be analyzed to bring various solutions to the problems and taking as opportunities for various product development or innovative service developments in the economic system and he also told about how higher education institutions can collaborate with uh, industries to bring about uh, innovative products and services and he also told about the changing standards in higher education institution of future and how the future prospects can be helpful in what is called as he told about uh, disruptive technologies that are helping in bringing innovation to the forefront earlier we used to have uh, to adopt these already developed technologies now the time has come to develop uh, innovative technologies by us uh, by using the various platforms provided by the government as well as various agencies like csd to bring about innovation culture among the students i take it as a privilege and i thank one and all the students and organizers for this wonderful webinar participating in this wonderful webinar and uh, they have uh, something to take away as thought process to change in their thought process and uh, think about uh, developing innovative culture among the students in the educational institutions like us certainly we will definitely think towards that and this collaborative agreement between the csd and uh, government college of ramos rajmandri will bring uh, a lot of uh, innovative activities in the coming future 
Thank you, Anandal. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Now I hand over the session to Dr. Annapurna, madam. Thank you, sir. I thank one and all the speakers, participants, research persons, students, and more so the technical assistance provided by the IT department coordinator, Dr. Sunil Kumar, and his team. Thank you, one and all. And now we culminate the session. Thank you, sir.